plastering for beginners and today we're going to talk about sponge float plastering and to be honest I haven't done a video like this in a while because I haven't been doing sponge float plastering and it's because of a few reasons. One I was finding it was getting a bit too messy as you spray in the um, water on the walls a lot of it can get on the floors and two sometimes I found that the consistency in the finish can be a bit inconsistent. So that's why I've not done it in a little while and to be honest I broke my sprayer so, <laughs> so that put me off but today what I've done is I've made a video because I'm working in a very old house and the plaster's been pulling in fast on this particular job so I just thought I'd give sponge float plastering a go just to try something new just to get around um, the problem so basically what I'm going to do is review going back to sponge float plastering and every time I do it I'm always surprised by the results and I always enjoy doing it. So what I'm going to do is walk you through the process of sponge float plastering, how I did it on this job. And then we're going to go into at the end whether it is better than traditional, whether it's worth doing. Um, and basically I'm just going to walk you through a new process. I've been looking at doing it and mixing it up a little bit and doing it a bit differently to how I did it in the past. Uh, to just to try and improve the process a little bit. So I've got a lot coming. I've got a lot of new methods and this video is jam packed. So keep your eyes on it. Let me know what you think and I'm going to keep popping up. Some new goodies. I've got a new pressure washer. Needed for sponging. I've got some knee pads because mine are killing at the moment. So I'm going to be wearing these a bit more. So let's see how this little bad boy goes. Okay, let's get to it. So we're starting at the top left side of the wall. Working up, down. And basically what I'm going to do here is just show you a quick demonstration of how I'm going to use a sponge float today. Like I said, these walls were sucking in fast, which is why I decided to have a go and just try something different. Um, and that's the thing with plastering. If it's not working the way you're doing it, you've got to kind of switch up your route, change your methods and just try different angles until it does work. As you can see, I'm working to a picture rail here, um, which can be tricky. You know, I mean, if you are new, what I'd actually recommend if you've got picture rails is tape them up because it can be a bugger to clean up after you've got <laughs> your plaster all over them. But... What you've got to do really is not put too much plaster towards the top if you are going to do it freehand. Because um, what happens if you just throw all your plaster then it's just going to get stuck in the grooves and stuck in the timber. So I always take my time around um, woodwork whether it be skirting boards or picture rails like this. And just working as you can see I stop short just before the timber and then I've reached up to add the little bit needed. So you don't really want to throw too much plaster towards the top and if you can use a head of your trowel just to trowel across and sweep the plaster alongside the pitch rail as well as moving the plaster down. So all we're doing here is just applying the plaster. Um, there's nothing really special to report on this little angle here. Um, like I said the walls have been PVA'd. They've PVA'd twice but it's still sucking in very fast. So what I've actually done with this is I've got one big mix on, I'm going to apply the first coat of plaster, quickly flatten it, which I'll show you in a minute, and then I'm going to use the same mix to apply the second coat. And that's what I use if, if the walls are sucking in very fast, then at least you're not um, wasting your time mixing plaster in between. It just means it's a very fast hit. It's usually, you know, two and a half to three hours because you are using the same batch of plaster for both coats. Um, and it's not a problem doing it that way because I do get asked, questions is it a problem to use the same batch of plaster it's not you've just got to be a bit faster than what you would you be usually as you could imagine um the plaster goes off <laughs> so again all i'm doing is applying the first coat of plaster trying to get it as flat as possible i don't really want to be having too much ripples because if you've got too much line showing and it does pull up I and mean, it does take in fast then you'll struggle to flatten them um, and you'll struggle to get rid of them so what you can can do is just take your time and make sure you're getting the plaster as flat as possible. Again, this is quite extreme conditions. It's like a 200 year old house. Um, so the walls are very, very porous, which is why the plaster is pulling in so fast. So just take your time. That's the first coat applied. And then I always flatten with the ox speed skim. Everyone knows I love this tool. <laughs> it's an absolute game changer. This is 1.2 ox speed skim ST. So here's a plastic blade one. Again, all we're doing is quick flatten. And this is what allows you to apply your second coat directly as well. Because if you flatten with the Ox Speed Skim, um, it doesn't pull the moisture to the front. 
which is why sometimes you can get them annoying little air pockets. So if you're using a plastic trowel, this allows you to apply your second coat directly onto it again without much waiting time. So quickly flatten with the Ox ST. And then I'm just going to go through the same thing again and apply the second coat of plaster. Nothing different here, we've all seen it before. Um, so what I'm going to do is just let you watch this a little bit. And then we're going to come back when it comes to the sponging and that's when I'm going to mix things up a little bit and do it a bit differently. Okay, this is when things start getting mixed up. What I'd usually do when I'm plastering is apply the second coat, flatten it, and then start flattening it with a trowel, flatten it with a trowel, and it'd only be within stage six, seven that I'd do the sponge floating. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna change it up a little bit. Because I've been thinking in the past, why are we sponge floating when the wall's almost flat? Why are we doing it at that point? So what I'm gonna do is gonna start the sponge floating process pretty much straight away. I've done a quick flatten of the second coat with the speed skim. It's getting any, any big lines or ripples. What I'm going to do now is sponge flow it now and then just see what the results turn out to me. So this was a little bit of an experiment for me. One, to reduce the workload and two, just to try something new, you know. I mean, I've been in and out of sponge floating. I'm thinking now I'm going to do a few tests. Just mix it up a little bit. So check it out, see what happens when I started to do the sponge flowing a bit earlier than usual. I think you'll be surprised by the results. Okay, so I've literally just flattened my second coat with the speed skim. So the wall's fairly flat already. And this is now where the stage where I'm going to start doing um, the sponging. So I'm hosing the wall down with a light spray of water. You don't need too much. Again, you don't want to really saturate the plaster with water. And my way of thinking is, because the plaster's not fully set yet, uh, the controversial side to sponge floating is because everyone's saying you're disturbing the plaster when it's set. It's still actually a bit green which is why I'm going to be sponge floating it now. I've got the fine sponge float. I actually recommend use a medium, um, medium grade sponge float. I'll probably talk about that in later videos. Um, I didn't like the fine one as much. I'm actually lending this from a friend because um, he had one on the job and I just thought I'd give it a go. This was a trial run for these walls. So all you do, I've saturated the wall with a bit of water and you literally just sponge it across with your sponge float. You wet it in the bucket before you do so. That's a little clip that I've shown. You always wet the sponge before you do it. Um, it just allows for a bit of lubrication and it stops it from dragging. If your wall's not wet enough, it's going to pull your plaster and it's going to tear it. So you need a little bit of moisture before you use the sponge float. Because um, it probably will do a bit more damage and good. The other good thing about using this now is it's a good time to clean up your picture rails on the underside with your sponge. Because it's just a really good way to clean off any excess plaster. Like I said, you can see this sponge is I'm using is a it's a bit hard going actually. This is a really tough sponge flow. It's quite um it's got not got a lot of give. So I'll tell you I prefer the medium grade, like I said, sponge float from Rafina. 
Um, this was just a little trial trial for me, just to see if I was going to start doing it. I'm going to get one next week now, but all you're doing is sponging the wall, giving it life, and it'll give you a texture. It'll give you a little texture on the wall, and that's what you want. And then I'm going to leave it for about, I think I left it for about two, three minutes. I didn't leave it for too long until I flattened it. Now, again, I'm using the Speed Skim ST. I never used to use this in the other videos. I used like a flexi trowel. But my way of thinking is, why are we using a flexi trowel when it's early on into the stage? We should be flattening. So again, I'm using the Speed Skim ST, which is a thicker blade, which means it's designed purely for flattening a plaster. And I found this to be really effective by, of getting out the, um, the sponge lines out of the plaster. And it was really good because... Because it was plastic, it's not bringing all the moisture to the surface, which means it's quite effective in flattening the sponge marks out again. And kind of reduce the amount of water that was going on the floor. Again, I find sponge floating can be very messy when you're using a steel trowel at this stage. And what I've found is the speed skim has helped the um, plaster to dry back up again, closing it in, which means you're not leaving it open and it's not going to be as wet when it comes to flattening it. So I've left it, like I said, two, three minutes. I didn't leave it too long at all after I sponge floated it. And then I've just gone straight onto the um, Speed Skim ST. So what we're doing now is flattening all them lines out, getting rid of the sponge marks, and we're trying to get a plaster really, really flat. And what I find really effective with a sponge is if there is any areas where there's a few ripples or there's a bit of bulges in the plaster, then that'll literally just pull it out. And now, in, again, in past videos, I used to go to the Flexi Trowel, I'm still on the Marshalltown base trowel. This is Marshalltown perma shape. I'm still on the base trowel, the base trowel which I use to apply the plaster. And all we're doing now is further getting rid of them lines and getting that wall dead flat. And you can see it's actually coming up quite smooth from the get-go. There's going to be no chance of any ripples because we're using a stiff, rigid trowel. I'm not using any flexes. And I'm just going to keep using my base trowel just to make sure and ensure that my walls are dead flat. Um, I found to be self-critical of myself, I think I was using the flexes a bit early in the past. Um, especially when I've just livened the plaster up. To use a flexi trowel after getting the plaster livened up with a sponge float, I don't know if that was the best choice. It never looked too bad, but I'm going to play it safe and stick with using the base trowel. Especially since it's so early on into the stage of plastering. So this now I'm going to class as my first trowel. Um, I'm going to class as a closing in stage of me using the speed skim. So this is a process I'm using and actually for me it got quite good results. Again, what you want to be careful of is you don't want to leave the plaster too long after you've used the speed skim. Because the speed skim ST, the plastic blade, is going to pull that plaster in. And if you're not careful, the sponge lines that are left behind, they you might not have a chance to get rid. So... Um, the speed skim really speeds up the process in the fact that as soon as I've flattened it with the speed skim I jumped straight on my Marshall Town and I'm starting to smooth it out, flatten any leftover lines and really really start to get this wall dead flat. And I've actually enjoyed doing it this way, I'm going to te keep testing this uh, method, I'm not fully convinced yet because it's obviously a new way of doing it for me but it's actually working quite well at the moment and as always when I've always used a sponge float. <laughs> I was always quite impressed with how well it goes. Um, so, so far, so good. All I'm going to do now is going to keep working the plaster. But for me, this is the most crucial part. is sponging it and then make sure you get all the lines out and removing any, any excess residue. As soon as I've flattened it, I've cleaned the sponge float. And now, after this stage, you're pretty much safe to carry on with the rest of your plastering. And as you'll see, I'll pretty much follow the same process what I would do if this, as if it was a traditional method. So, give your sponge float a good clean. Get rid of the mess. Get rid of this plaster that's stuck inside it. And clean it up, otherwise it'll clog. And now, what I'm doing is sticking on a base trowel now. And all I'm going to do is carry on the process. And now I'm just going to flatten it. So this is my second trowel. Um, and all we're doing now is just working the plaster getting it really really flat I'm still on the Marshalltown perma shape and we're just going to continue to get this plaster nice flat ready for the final stages so I'm going to come back in a minute let's just see how I flatten and then I'm going to come back to the process and see how we work it for the final two stages 
video what did you think did you like the finish how was the process was it different to what I've done usually let me know with the comments below um, is it better than traditional plastering every time I do the sponge flowing it does kind of uh, excite me a little bit so I'm gonna actually be carrying on doing it through this job 
I'm going to be working through and just testing new methods, trialing new things out. And so I'll probably be recording them and putting them on the channel. So I've got a few ideas for this, actually. You know, I, I did it originally just to help with the walls because they were pulling in so fast. But actually doing it is making me think, you know, I think we could we could keep this up a little bit. So I'm going to actually do sponge floating a little bit more. I know it's considered a bit controversial, um, but we're just going to see how it goes on. So keep an eye out on the videos. Let me know what you think, by the way. If you did like this video, please like and subscribe. Um, if you haven't done already, thank you so much for watching. And um, if you want to learn the full process of plastering the traditional way, which is the way I recommend for beginners, by the way, I don't really recommend anything in this video for beginners. Check out the free welcome course we've done from Plastering for Beginners. We want you for the full process of plastering from mixing to application to finishing. All you have to do is click the link below this video and get involved. Thank you so much for watching. Keep your eyes out for next videos coming up. We're going to go deeper into the sponge floating application process. Thanks a lot. Cheers.